So recently I had a new student start lessons and he said, I want to become a lead guitarist. I want to play lead guitar in my church band. But he didn't know how. He didn't know how to go from being a rhythm guitarist to a lead guitarist. You know what I'm saying. He said, I'm a rhythm guitarist and I can do a little bit of lead. I know how to play a little bit in the mind of pentatonic scale. And so I thought to myself, sure, this is interesting. So during his first lesson, I thought I would ask him to do something that he wouldn't expect. So now he was probably thinking, I'm gonna ask him to do the most difficult thing he's ever done before. What do you think it was? I asked him to play a very common chord progression because I wanted to see how well he can play it and what he can do with it. So I asked him to play G, D, E minor, and C. So how do you think he responded? What do you think he played? So then I asked him, where else can you play this chord progression? Because I wanted to see what his knowledge was like. Because you see, lead guitarists don't just play big epic solos and melt faces. And a lead guitarist needs to have a very good knowledge of chords, rhythm, harmony, all that stuff. My word, how's that? So after he demonstrated how he could play this chord progression, I said to him, you know what? I'm noticing a few things. One, you're using big stacked chords, which means this. It means that if you are playing with other mid-range instruments in a band, it means that whoever's listening to you probably won't hear what you're playing much, which is a real shame. Number two, as soon as he moved out of this position, he didn't know many different ways to play each one of those chords, so he really got stuck. He couldn't play the G, like the chords here, between the seventh and the 10th frets, like G, D, E minor, and C. So then he said to me, can you help me become a lead guitarist? And I said, yes. So then he said, well, what now? I said, well, first of all, you know what? I think it's time for a tasty lick. You know what I'm saying? For you to become a lead guitar player, you need to be able to do the basics really well and go from playing stacked chords to triads. And you also need to know as many different voicings or versions of each one of these chords. Because lead guitar playing is not just about scales, it's about playing over chords, playing over changes. And so he was like, yo, that's cool. I wanna learn that. So I was like, yo, you should totally learn this. So he said, okay, well, how should I go about learning these different chord shapes? So I said, you know what? The cage system is a great system to learn your major and minor chord shapes. Here's how the cage system works, simply put. Okay, you've got these five major chord shapes. The C shape, the A shape, the G shape, the E shape, and the D shape. And notice how they're all in one position. So as soon as we go out of this open position from the open string to the third fret, it's pretty hard to play those same chords in one position. But then he said, but I can already play those chords. I said, yes, indeed you can, but can you use those chord shapes over the entire neck? And he was like, hmm, no, I can't. But now we've just been talking about how he shouldn't use stacked chords, but these are big stacked chords. So what do we do? Right, so we get rid of some of the notes. So first of all, we're gonna get rid of the, the root note and the top note. And we're left with a triad, ha. Oh. So now, if we move this up, let's move it up two frets, we get D, and that's your C shape. And that's how you'll commonly use your C shape. So the A shape, I'm just moving this up. And then once again, I'm gonna drop the root and drop the top note. And I get left with this C major triad. So now if we move the G shape forward, it's gonna look like this. We're moving it forward to fret eight on the E string, which is the note C as well. So now, once again, we're gonna drop some notes. We're gonna drop the root note, some of these notes at the bottom. We're gonna drop this one, and we get this. But here's another way you can play C major using the G shape, is you can play the top half of the chord. And after the G shape comes the E shape. Ha! Oh, so we're gonna get rid of the root, the fifth, and the top C. And we're left with, that's your E shape. And after the E shape comes the final shape, the D shape, where we're moving this shape up until we get to C. And there's C over there, C on the 10th fret. But now we've got to drop one of these notes. So we'll just drop the root. Well, now you've got five different C majors. It carries on. So it seemed like to me, while I was watching him on the screen, like he was starting to seem hopeful. He was starting to get excited that he can get better at playing these chords. 
yo. So then he started to realize, oh my word, this like cage system thing is actually quite effective. So now I said to him, right, your next challenge. Can you work out how to play G, D, E minor and C between let's say the fifth and eighth fret using this cage system? So I was like, okay, let's see if you can do it. As his new teacher, I was determined to help him achieve his goal of becoming a lead guitarist in his church band. Herman's made the most incredible progress. He's applied what he's learned. His chord knowledge has improved so much so that now that we're diving deeper into playing over chords and over chord changes and creating lines and, and improvising, he's now equipped to play over the chords, which is so critical. He has started getting compliments from the music director and from some of the other musicians in his church band, which is epic. Yo. So I'm pretty sure very soon he's going to start playing lead guitar. So click here to watch the next video where you can see how I learned to become a lead guitar player right here.